Good morning. This is Tim Broussard. Nice to see everyone. Um, the uh, this next article is about Sir Henry Head, um, English per person, and he is quite a complicated guy. Um, he really didn't get into the world of stroke and aphasia until um, much, much later in his life. Um, and he, so it was just very complicated as it went through. And I'll talk about that, of course. Uh, but he was born in 1861 and lived a long time till 1940. Um, part of the sad part of this is that he acquired Parkinson's disease when he was 19, when he was, um, at 1919. Um, so he, he had to retire from the hospital in 1919 and live for another 21 years um, dealing with Parkinson's, which again, we'll talk about that here too. Um, uh, but for all of that, after he had Parkinson's, he went forward, even though he couldn't go back to work, um, wrote what turns out to be, and you see it in the title, um, one of the most famous books about aphasia. Uh, called aphasia and the kindred disorders of speech. Um, so he uh, obviously started as a physician. And as he um, uh, obviously was adopted into the hospitals in London, he met and made friends of and worked with and learned from uh, everybody from um, Hewlin uh, Jackson, which you just saw an article a couple months ago, uh, Charles uh, Shillington, also <laughs> British, also you've heard about uh, heard about him before, um, and of course Henry Head and several several other people with whom he's been in contact. Even uh, one Wilder uh, Penfield is part of the, all this, though it doesn't show up in the in the article because I'd run out of time. Um, but. Uh, he, they all met each other and learned a lot from each other going forward. Um, the, um, but going forward, his, his family was quite famous. He had many, many uh, siblings. And one is in the article is the fact that one of his uh, sons um, uh, was on the Titanic when it went down. So, uh, and his body was never found. So that's sad for everybody, especially then, because uh, again, they were all relatively young when all that had happened. Um, the, um, but uh, he was good as a physician. He was good as a teacher. Um, and as you hear about him, um, uh, he knew he was very good at both of those. And he would, be the, he would tell everybody that he was the best at what he did. Um, and sometimes was quite of a braggart. Um, but clearly, he knew what he was doing and worked very hard, uh, working with especially Jackson um, to better understand how the brain works. Um, the, um, uh, it was always funny, and there's a good quote here, and I'll talk about that. Um, uh, he, was, he was quite a poet. Um, his wife was quite a poet and an author, uh, and they did a lot of work together. Um, obviously different things, but they talked about each other's work and learned from each other going forward because um, they lived outside of town and often, uh, Henry had to go into London and stay there for months at a time. Um, then eventually, uh, as he uh, uh, was working with patients, he wanted to see how the nerves work and he couldn't find any patients who were able to explain to him exactly the sensations that his patients were, were getting as a result of one um, nerve uh, uh, diseases or another. So he, believe it or not, he volunteered and he got some other uh, surgeons to work with him to cut uh, two sensory nerves on his left hand, had to cut them and then had to suture them, had to tie them back together. And, and believe it or not, there's a lot of pain there. And it took, it took four years of him studying his own sensations of a, of a person with a particular kind of, of uh, nerve disease. Um, so that's why part of why his wife was out in town, out in the country, and he was in the city, and he was there for four years, and often would be months and months and months um, without being able to see each other. Um, and he didn't have any kids, uh, but they did start, uh, they had their own diaries, and they also started something that's called a, uh, 
a, um, a, a commonplace book um, and the uh, so that they could um, trade whenever they did get to see each other they would trade with each other this commonplace book um, and then read what you had been the other one had been thinking about and and was concerned with anything in the world um, so they took each one took the other one with them when they went back to work and then they would continue to write about their own thoughts um, about themselves or about what your spouse had been talking about and they would keep trading that going forward and i never heard of a commonplace book but it was quite famous in the 1800s 1700s and 1800s um, for people who really back then they didn't have the internet um, so they had to go to see, they had to do lots of things that would take years between seeing each, each other, seeing their spouses. Um, they use that particular kind of book. And since I saw it the first time, now I've seen it everywhere in the 1800 um, uh, biographicals that I've seen. But as, um, as Head was quite a teacher, and he was very good uh, bedside manner as a, as a doctor, um, there was one time and he had lots of his students always, always surrounding him everywhere he went in the hospital. And there was one time, and I'll read it here to you here. He was, because um, I mentioned he's a poet and an actor in his own way. He, um, uh, he was working uh, with one of his patients, all the students were there, and he was listening to the woman's heart, you know. Um, and he said, without warning, the patient threw her arms around, around him and kissed him. Without any hesitation, head turned to his students and said with the gesture, Typically, typically, gentlemen, typically, typical, typical. Um, so he liked being a teacher um, and knowing everything he needed to know. Um, but obviously uh, volunteered to have his own body um, uh, hurt um, so that he could study how that was happening. And then unfortunately, as he acquired um, uh, Parkinson's disease, he had the same thought that he would then uh, attack uh, the symptoms of Parkinson's disease and record all of that too. Um, so as much as he had done all the different things he had done uh, and volunteered to figure out how some of these sensations could be mapped, um, then he had his own um, uh, trouble and continued to map his own uh, sensations and his own thoughts about that going forward. So that was very helpful, um, not only to him, but to uh, history as he had did uh, record all of that uh, going forward. Um, so it wasn't until World War I that he uh, started, because now obviously everybody was at work with the war, and he started treating brain injuries coming to London after, during the war, and began to understand a lot more about speech deficits and aphasia. Um, and that, and then he ended up with uh, Parkinson's, Physically, he couldn't work at the hospital, but he could continue to write, and his brain was was good all the way to the end, uh, as he would, as he had told us and his friends. Um, and so he ended up writing what is quite a uh, famous book um, that I mentioned before, uh, two volumes, um, and published them in 1926. So that is seven years after. Parkinson had continued to start, um, but he continued to work for a long, long time. Um, uh, not only, I mean, he he uh, delivered his Croonian lecture um, uh, in twenty one. Um, he um, the um, yeah twenty one. He um, he was <laughs> believe it or not, he was the editor for the, the brain, it's a medical journal that's very famous back then and still today, um, for 15 years from, from 1910 to 1925. Um, then he wrote the, the two volume uh, book, uh, Phasia and the T Kindred Disorders of Speech um, in 26. So he continued to work on that and he did that again for almost 20 years, uh, working his way through. Um, and talking a lot about integration and how important that is when it comes to plasticity and, and the brain and uh, aphasia. Um, so all of that came together as he 
uh, descended and is one of his friends who worked with him, uh, was friends of him through the end. Um, and I'll give you this quote too, uh, with his excellent health, he, he, he well knew what he had to face. Long years of steadily increasing physical disablement with his mind unimpaired. In the grip of a releasant, re relentless foe, uh, he continued to move forward. And his final wish was the advancement in England of the science of me medicine in the widest sense and left his uh, somewhat large <laughs> uh, for fortunes to the Royal Society in London. So quite a guy, lived a long time, and for all of living so long, he clearly had to deal with any number of things, um, uh, working with the, the patients from the war, and then him volunteering to hurt himself so that others could better understand how the nerves work. And then he ended up with um, Parkinson's for the last 21 years of his life, battling his way through. So quite the guy. So Henry Head um, is, is his name. You'll continue to see him as well as Sherlington and Jackson and Holmes and other people as they all moved forward from the 1800s into the 1900s um, and then into today. The next uh, article, believe it or not, will be about Freud. Um, everybody will think, well, Freud, everybody knows who he was. What does this have to do with aphasia? Uh, so we will be uh, talking with that in two weeks. Nice to see everyone. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.